Nagan Dagang Hapon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Mr. Jonathan Ono, Marketing Manager of Olmix Asia. And I am Dr. Joe Vicinal, Technical Services Manager of Olmix Philippines Incorporated. And on behalf of Olmix Group and the Philippine College of Swine Practitioners, we would like to welcome all of you and thank you for connecting with us today. We are now connected live with more than 100 participants from all over the Philippines and neighboring Asian countries. So again, thank you very much for your great interest and we would love to hear from you. So please feel free to uh, say uh, hi or hello or any messages or any shout out in the chat box. Before we proceed this afternoon's program, may we request your attention to tune into your screen and watch this short video for you to have an idea of the who we are and what is Olmix. So that is Olmix, and we have been doing business supporting our animal industry here in the Philippines for more than 20 years already. We did some banner products like Mistral, Mtox Plus, Mfeed Plus, and Algimune through our distributors, AgriBio Philippines Incorporated, Compania JM Incorporated, and UNAPO. And we are still determined to support the industry in the years to come, especially during these cha challenging times brought by ASM. I agree, Jap. ASF indeed is a strong opponent and have devastated the vast majority of the swine industry globally. Which is why this afternoon we gathered different resource persons from different countries, especially from those 
hit by ASF first and repopulated to share the stories and lessons learned. You are correct, Jonathan. We will see more of them later. But to start our program, may we call on the Omix Asia Pacific Manager, Mr. Trin Kuang Tan, to deliver the welcome remarks. Mr. Tan, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon, Job and Jonathan. So I'm very honored uh, to be uh, invited uh, by the Philippine uh, College of Swine Practitioner uh, for giving an introduction speech. So I'm based in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, my name is Tan, and I uh, have a chance to visit the Philippines uh, quite often before COVID time. So I'm very pleased to join this event and to share a uh, few words about the ASF issue and experience from our invited speaker from uh, France with Philip, from uh, Cambodia with Laville, Lunan from China, and of course, Dr. Max and Dr. Voltaire from the Philippines to share their experience on this issue. So once again, I wish all of us a good seminar and I hope it is fruitful for you. Thank you so much, Mr. Tan, for welcoming our audience and for emphasizing the importance of these types of collaborations to overcome the challenges brought by ASF. Now, moving forward to our main topic this afternoon, Repopulation one-on-one. -on -one. And with us today are five renowned personalities in the pig industry from different parts of Asia to share their experiences in battling ASF, the stories and lessons they have on repopulation. Before moving on uh, the presentations, may I inform you that you can send your question to our speakers today by using the chat box uh, below on the button or just, and just type in your questions. You may send your question during the pre presentation, no problem. Just kindly indicate to which speaker your question is des destined to. All our questions uh, will be reviewed and all the questions from your side are welcome. So we will take time in the end of the presentation to review all of them. But in case the event runs short of time, no, don't worry, we will review them and come back to you later per email. All right, so now let us now continue with our webinar entitled Repopulation 101, Lessons and Practical Solutions Again, ASF, Testimonies from Asia and the Philippines. And welcome our first speaker, Job. Thank you, Jonathan. Our first speaker this afternoon has been in the industry for more than four decades already. He has been a general manager and consultant to many farms and feed meals from different parts of the world, such as France, Ukraine, and Russia. At present, he is a consultant in pig farms in countries like Vietnam, Cambodia, and China. So to give us insights on the practical aspects of biosecurity, on how to simplify your biosecurity, let us all welcome Mr. Philip Grill. Philip, good afternoon. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Philippe Greau. I am French people. I work in pig production since uh, a long time. And I want to discuss with you uh, how to try to simplify your biosecurity against African fever and the other disease. So what is the biosecurity? The biosecurity, it is all the measures you can take to protect your livestock against two things. First, against the introduction of the new disease, a new infection agent. And the second, it is to avoid the spreading of this disease into your farm. In fact, you have two different biosecurity. You have external biosecurity to protect your farm from outside. or it's, it's, You can use also the name of bio-exclusion. And the second is to avoid the spreading, it is internal biosecurity, including, for example, batch management, including a good cleaning and disinfection. So the main target you need to focus, it is to let the high self virus and all the disease outside the farm. Why? Because the high self virus come always from outside. And I repeat, please focus to focus only on the outside. The disease arrives always from outside. 
So you have two things and two living risk carrier or inert risk carrier to focus. The first, it is the living risk carrier. What is it? It is, I put in red, the main, uh, the main uh, dangerous things you have to protect. It is, of course, pigs, because it is the biggest enemy of the pig industry, the human, the white balls, and everybody and a lot of people forget mouse, rats, flies and mosquitoes. Please focus more on mouse rats because they carry this disease very often. And a lot of people forgot fly and mosquitoes. Please remember one thing. In Romania, the last study made on fly shows that 50% of fly carry this disease. So if you take precaution against people and if you forgot fly, it is a big mistake. The second risk, it is the inert. Of course, all the drugs can carry this disease. It is carry this disease by feed trucks, by manure trucks, by delivery trucks. Take care of the trucks. Of course, in pig, in pig farm, you don't have to eat pig meat because ISF virus survive a long term into the pig meat. And people also forgot a lot of things. Feedbacks. Feedbacks are dangerous. All the packaging and dangerous. So try to unpack all the goods before introduce them into your farm. And what are the main mistakes made in biosecurity? The first thing, it is not to take big measure of about six else of gate. I show you what is it. Second problem, bad flow management. Because you have to protect your farm, so you have to reduce the entry into your farm. And the second, and it is very, as a third, sorry, the first point, it is a bad cleaning before the infection. People focus on disinfection, but they don't focus on bad on cleaning. And you are not able to disinfect something if you have bad cleaning before. So six gates of L. The six gates of L are the gate, this is a point where the farm are in contact and get in touch with the outside. And of course, loading bay is a place where you load and you unload your animal. Second, it is a corpse building uh, storage, very dangerous. Quarantine, please. Quarantine, it is the best tool to avoid some disease. Alors, it can be ASF, it can be PPRS, it can be a lot of disease. Focus more on quarantine. Infirmary, very basic things. Changing room and disinfection room. Disinfection room allow you to disinfect everything go, coming into your farm. So, loading bay. What are the loading bay? And of course, if your farm is very small, you are not to focus a lot of, on a lot of things. And I, I, I give you an example. In China, most of the smallest farms are free of SF. Why? Because there are no contact with outside. And I repeat, the disease arrives always from outside. And for big farm, please try to take all the measures, small farm, be simple, and let the external person outside. It is the best tool you can take. Loading bay. Of course, what are the main mistakes? Not two room. You need to have two room in the loading bay. One clean room for you, and one dirty part with between the two parts a backflow preventer to avoid some animals coming back and to avoid some driver to coming back. Of course, all the slopes have to go towards the outside, and you need to have a specific people, specific clothes, specific cleaning tools to, to disinfect after using. Second problem, it is a corpse of dead animal. You have to destroy the meat, you have to destroy this corpse, and you have three options to do that. The most important thing is to the fire. Burning is the most important way to destroy the corpse. If you are not able to do that, you can cook by steam because the temperature kills this virus. And the third way is to bury into the soil with quicklime or with acidic, acid, acid citric to disinfect the meat, to disinfect the environment where you bury this animal. Please destroy all the corpse. Quarantine, the best tool to avoid some mistake, but 
to work, you need to have enough time. And for me, you have to separate this quarantine in two phases. First phase, it is the most important. It is the observation time. It is four weeks. You have to look the appetite. You have to look the temperature. You have to look the behavior. You have to look if the animal cough. It is the phase you, you protect your farm. And after 30 days, you are able to prepare the animal to your vaccination plan. It is the second phase. And for me, quarantine needs to take 12 weeks. Four, most important, to protect your farm. Eight, to prepare the animal. Infirmary, the biggest mistake made, when you send an animal into infirmary, they have never to come back into your farm. Only one way to go, slaughterhouse, never come back. And of course, infirmary need specific people, specific clothes, and specific color of clothes because they don't to need to come back into your farm. So please try to be simple, but take very simple measure and colored clothes, washing after using, it is the best way. Changing room, please. It is a place where everybody need to go. The owner, the manager, the, the, all the employees, and all the people coming into the farm. And they have to change all the clothes, including underwear. And they have to take a good shower. A good shower with shampoo are very efficient. And they have to clean the end and they have to let everything, no lighter, no cigarette, no computer, nothing. And of course, it is very important. And why I say a shower are very important. I want to show you one very important study made in France. In France, we, in a SPF farm, we contaminate some animals with classical swine fever. And we ask two employees to take the pigs into the ends. And after that, we ask to the employee to go in another room where we have free animal, uh, SPF animal, and he take this animal and we look. All the animals taken by this guy without shower, without change of clothes are contaminated. If we repeat this operation, but we ask to this guy to take a shower to change his clothes, we see no contamination. So please. A good shower with a good shampoo with enough time, 10 minutes, are efficient and the new clothes are efficient to break the, con the contamination way. And everybody, I repeat, everybody, even the owner, even he has to go into the farm for two minutes, have to take a good shower before to go inside. Disinfection room, it is a place where you put all the things before the entry into the farm and always unpacked all the things before disinfection. It is exactly the same for drugs, for tools, for everything. And you can disinfect with gas, with UV, with O3, but you have to disinfect everything. The second problem when we find into the farm, it is the batch management of flow control. Please, Try to reduce the number of people going into your farm. Try to reduce the number of trucks coming into your farm. Try to reduce everything. And if you allow some people or some trucks coming close to your farm, you have to know the bio status. Where it come from? What is the, the, the operation made before? And the third problem, try to clean and disinfect each country. Please, the basic rule, no visit, no visit. Or if you allow some people coming into your farm, ask him to have, to let three or five days in quarantine before entering. It is already done, but it's very efficient. And of course, some specific farm like a studs or boar station, multiplication farm, never allow some people coming into your farm. It is very dangerous. And to receive the goods, to receive the tools, to receive the drugs to receive everything, please try to consolidate in a small place before all the things in a, to, and to regroup these things into one single trucks. Less you receive trucks, better can be the situation. And of course, 
you need to create a quarantine and disinfection room for goods. I repeat, quarantine very efficient, disinfection very efficient, but please don't forget that the entry have to be reduced. It is for people, but it is also for rats and mouse because very often the rats live outside and come into your farm to eat. And it is the reason that you have to treat against rats and mice every week, every month, sorry, every month, inside and outside the seats. It is very important because if you want to kill a lot of things, it is important to, to treat outside. And it is exactly the same thing for the feed meal. The fly, same thing. You have to treat flies and mosquitoes inside the farm and outside, but it is every week because you have to kill the worms and you have to kill the, the adults. It is very important to, to fight against ASF and all the diseases. And of course, you need to have all the data, all the information about your people. Please pay him some medical visit for six months. You need to know if he have a good health. Second thing, you have to write a complete handbook for biosecurity. And he need to, to be signed by the people. Ask him to forbid pigs at home. I don't support to see some people have pigs at home and coming into your farm to work. It is very, very dangerous. For example, in Russia, it is one way to contaminate a lot of farm because people have pigs at home. Ban people to go to hunt. White balls carry this disease. Please ask for each visitor is each people the history where we come from he has no right to go into slaughterhouse he has to no right to go into a delicatessen factory he don't have to the right to go into the meat transformer factory because it is very dangerous and of course for each trucks of delivery you need to go Try to prohibit the pig at home. It's not normal to see driver with pigs at home. Try to focus on driver, ban personal contact with white balls. Never go to the hunter. And for the raw material, very dangerous. You have to choose a good place to buy because some places are very dangerous for wheat, corn, barley, and rice, because some people dry them on the road, and it is very dangerous if it is a contaminated place. And of course, all meat soap products can be canceled, and they are very dangerous very often. Okay, and please, you need to focus more and more on the driver, and you can take PCR tests, and if it's not enough, you can introduce into the field some formaldehyde products if you want to, to reduce the risk of contamination into the field. Okay? And please have a look. It is in Vietnam. Please. You have manioc, you have rice, you have corn dry on the road. And of course, 
a pit trucks go between the raw material. It is the best place where you can be contaminated. So the buyer into the field mill have a big, big, big job to try to choose a good place to buy the raw material. And please, if you store this raw material for two months, you reduce a lot of the risk of contamination. And I repeat, you can introduce some specific products to reduce the risk of contamination into the feed mill. And people forget very often the bags. How many people take the bags into the hands? I, I calculate sometimes 30 people. And please, if you can disinfect by UV channel the bags before underloading, it is well. But the most important thing is to avoid to put the bags into the farm close to the animal. Please unpack the feed bags, unpack the feed before to go to see the animal and never introduce the bags into the farm. Cleaning and, and disinfection, it is the third point and very important point. You are not able to disinfect something if it's not clean. Focus always on cleaning phase. If you make a good cleaning, you make a good job. And how to clean? You have to scrap all the organic matter, please, because the organic matter has a big storage of disease, a big storage of virus, big storage of bacteria. So you have to scrap to brush, to broom all the organic matter. And after that, you have to wash with a big flow, low pressure to move on all the organic matter. And after that, you can apply an alkaline detergent. Why alkaline detergent? Alkaline detergent is the best tool to begin to kill the ISF virus because it is a lipidic virus. And alkaline product destroys the lipidic layer. And after you wash with high pressure, you rinse, and if you do that very well, you kill 90% of the virus, you kill 90% of the bacteria, and the 10% can be killed by disinfectant and drying. So always clean well, always wash well, always use a detergent, and after that you can disinfect. So remove all the organic material, okay, with a big flow of water and no big pressure. Use a detergent and repeat alkaline detergent as very efficient against lipidic virus like ISF. Always wash after with high pressure. So 30 liters per minute with 120, 140 kilograms of pressure to remove everything, okay? And if you do the job very well, 90% of the organisms are killed and move on and you reduce the risk uh, of contamination. And after that, disinfect with a good products. Of course, try to choose the best disinfectant against ISF. And always try to show to check if you spread this disease, this disinfectant everywhere. So you can use a colorized disinfectant in blue. You can use disinfectant in form because it is very important to check the quality of your job. Okay. I use very often foam like this because I, I am able to look and to check if I spread my disinfectant everywhere. And of course, I repeat, not all the disinfectants are efficient against ISF. Choice always the best disinfectant against ISF. Okay, formaldehyde, uh, ammonium quaternaire, uh, acid citric, uh, monopersulfate of magnesium, uh, of potassium. Sorry, you have a very efficient. So check and never over treat. If people ask you to use 1%, use 1%. The 2% is stupid. And when it is an effect, please, you have to think to kill or to reduce the water, the humidity into the farm. It is very important to cancel all the humidity. So always warm your building 
ventilator bullying, spread a, a desiccant uh, a dryer to reduce the capacity of the humidity into your building. If you do that, you improve a lot of the efficiency of your disinfectant. So when I manage my disinfection, I full, I ventilate at full capacity. After that, I warm my building and to finish, sometimes I spread a disinfectant, a dryer to kill all the humidity. And in, if you do that, the risk of ISF are very reduced. But I repeat, when you work with, against ISF, you work against all the disease. So all the measures you can take to fight against ISF will, will have a big effect on all the disease. And very often people take good measure against ISF, see the result into the farm increase. Okay. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you very much, Philip, for emphasizing the need to be watchful of these six hell gates and the importance of having a good flow and effective cleaning before disinfection. Very practical, providing as well tips on the right disinfectants and this additional measure to include drying and desiccation. Indeed, these are very valuable insights on how we can simplify by security. Now we jump to another country through our second speaker. Jonathan? Yes, Rob. So our speaker uh, obtained his diploma at the University of Technology of Cambodia, Department R Rural Development. And in 2019, he got his Master of Business Administration degree. He has held several managerial positions, among of which is the general manager of Mongreti Exporting Rice and Mills uh, in 2014, Mongreti Fruit Farm to, uh, to 2015, Okna Mongreti Agricultural Institute in uh, 2016 up to present. To share on people management during ASF and repopulation, let us all welcome the general manager of uh, MP MCMC, Dr. Mr. Lee Laville. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lee Laville from Cambodia, MSPIC ACMC. Right now, I would like to share about how to manage our people during ASF in outbreak in Cambodia and repopulation our pig. Here's the some topics that I'm going to share. Uh, today. And first is about my company is MSPIC ACMC that we have the import the genetic from UK since 2008. Now we have the population of the farm and I will to share this is my uh, owner, my founder Oknya Mongrati and the company. And since 2008 until now, we have established four farm, four commercial farm and one feed mill. And in 2019, there was an outbreak of ASF, ASF in China, and it's also spread to Cambodia in February 2019. During that time, our MSP integrated farm and the local farm also outbreaks a lot. The backyard farm, the small scale farm are gone. Only the commercial farm that survive because they have their rights by our security. So this I just share something during the outbreak in Cambodia that it goes very fast and destroy a lot of pigs in Cambodia as well. Like you see in here, there's a lot of loss even our arms pig integrated farm nearby and has outbreak very fast. So at that time, we set up our team and discuss together to find the way how to sort out the problem and how to prevent outbreak to our Heard. So at that time, we discussed doing a lot of meeting, brainstorming to find the way, the route of transmission. That we know all the route of transmission 
that we have is come from the feed, from, from the pig, or transportation in and out, or human come into the farm. So we have to try to find and cut all that roots of transmission that can go into our farm. So the way that we need, we can cut all these root of transmission, we have to prevent all the virus, all the contacts, kill the virus, monitoring, screening, and block the virus do not come into our farm. Like here, the prevention that we know the security that we can have inside our farm, even though we can control all the contact all anything, all equipment that go into our farm. At that time, we have to train our people to be aware of the biosecurity and need a rapid response to the farm, to the team, that they can alert to the team anytime when they suspect that any case happened or any biosecurity uh, uh, respects. If if someone or anyone that do not respect the biosecurity protocol, they have to report immediately. And then we share all the information to all our team to explain them about how to prevent the roots of transmission to our farm. And we need to monitor day by day, every day to our staff, and they have to report very fast. At that time, during the most outbreak, we also set up a biosecurity officer to control all the contact inside the farm, all the truck in and outside the farm. At that time, there are a lot of uh, outbreak around the farm and we have to tell them about what are the virus and how can it contaminate and spread into the farm, like a lot of meat, pork, or frozen pork that can rest a lot, uh, a long day of virus inside the farm. Right here, that is important also that we have to increase the, uh, we call green zone, that we have to control our nucleus farm by enlarge our green zone. Like at our commercial farm as well, we have a lot of building. So in case of virus, it's not easy to control inside the farm. That's why we have to enlarge our green zone that we have to prevent all routes of transmission. We cut off any chance of transmission that can come and close nearby the farm. At that time, we have enlarged by buying a lot of local pig, the backyard pig, 20 kilometers around the farm. We have negotiation and buy a lot of pig from them. And then we pay them with a special price and training them to do the disinfection and uh, sell the pigs for them. Make sure around the farm there is no pigs that they dress without any biosecurity. At that time, it's a serious time. Even though our farm, we have prepared a lot of uh, 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 truck, more workers, more distribution house. Inside the farm, we have one distribution house near the gate, and the truck outside the farm can come and pick from one distribution house and send to the selling point that we are not allowed all the sale people or the, the butcher come nearby the farm at that time. So the selling point is at least 20 kilometers away from the farm that it can be safe to our farm. And we do uh, disinfections all the time at that. And otherwise, because of the farm is not so far from the villagers, the villager, they sell fresh pork nearby. And before they buy the pork to sell is the pork from the market. And at that time, we, uh, we have 
set up one hygiene slaughterhouse that can provide all the meat inside the area. So at that time, our team go to all the market around the farm to, uh, what you say, uh, to provide them the pork with a special price, 70% of the price in the market to let the people there only have our pig to sell nearby, uh, nearby market. At that time, every, every market around the farm, we have provided them a special price to sell the pigs. Make sure they don't buy any pigs from uh, other uh, area to sell in our uh, area nearby the farm. One more thing about the kitchen, we have prepared a special food that every farm cannot allow to make their own food inside the farm. We have prepared one kitchen nearby the farm that we can buy all vegetable or meat to make the complete food, complete feed, and then send all the complete feed to the farm. That the farm, there's no more feed inside the farm. And otherwise, the biosecurity as well, it is very important that we have to understand that the biosecurity is the most important in the farm that people have to obey and do it correctly. It doesn't mean that they go day by day by security and forgot about yesterday. So the right way is when they do the biosecurity, they have to report about yesterday problem. Anyone or people come in and out the farm without changing clothes or any outside truck get inside the farm or not. This all we have to survey every day. And we also discussed during the outbreak a lot. We have discussed in the team, if in case there, there is an outbreak happen inside our big farm. So what are we going to do? At that time, we also discussed to prevent. If our big farm have anything happen, we have to immediately report to the team and the manager have to come and decide immediately and to put the strategy how to solve all the problem or have to make decision to cut all the disease. At that time was the serious situation. Like you see in our farm, there was a lot of building inside the farm. So we example, if there is one building anywhere outbreaks, example in this area outbreaks. So what are we going to do? That is very important. And if it happened, the worker have to report immediately to the manager and we have to take all sample and to check the rapid test or send sample for PCR if we find any uh, suspected case. Example, if we, want, we find one pence or two pence outbreaks. So the decision have to decide immediately to prevent or to count all the pigs in that building or the nearby buildings immediately to prevent the spread of disease and to control all the people around inside the farm, not uh, 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 go to other place. So they have to go to their own buildings only. That is very important that I would like to share that we have to think in advance that if we have a lot of buildings, so to prevent the biosecurity, and this one, we think that if it happened inside the farm, so what are we going to do to solve the problem immediately? And we can save our farm. Like in this case, we do at our outbreak farm, at the uh, integrated farm, we can sell a lot of pigs by selecting the saliva of the pigs. At that time, if we, want, if we see one suspected case happen, we can run them on doing the saliva test for PCR test immediately. 
And if we find any pens positive, we can cut down, cut them out immediately by bagging them or bury them uh, uh, safely. And then we can uh, control the ASF at that time. But uh, this one, we need to uh, the report from the worker very fast. If they report late, we cannot sell the pig also. We have to call 100% of that. But from our experience, when they report it on time, we can cut only one or two pens that we found the infection. And then the rest of the pen, we can sell our pigs and raise it until slaughter. That is our experience about uh, uh, outbreak of the ASF as well. So also about after outbreak, we have the experience of repopulation of our pigs by cleaning and do disinfection. We have keeping our uh, farm at least two months. From our experience, we cannot raise the pig within one month because we spend at least two months to disinfect and to Centennial to check all the pig inside the building, whether they are safe to raise the pigs again. Like in here, this our experience of disinfectant. We do a lot of disinfectant, limestone, spraying, a lot to uh, disinfect. And in also in and out, we burning all the buildings that we suspect the virus. And also we have to block out the virus inside the farm, clear everything before we can decide it to put uh, to raise the pigs again. So we have the lab confirm to do all their PCR lab, the environmental lab test from the soil or from the water or from the waste pond. We also do from the waste pond. We select all the waste from the waste pond or from the pen before we decided to raise the pig again. And it has to confirm everything by laboratory. That is the way that we uh, uh, confirm that the, the, the farm that should raise the pig again. Like at that time we do the centennial pig by bringing the small pig, the small pig inside the outbreak area after we disinfect everything and we bring all the pig at least uh, uh, one week to two weeks to check, confirm, and then we take the saliva and the blood of the pigs after we uh, uh, free raising inside the farm for two weeks. And then we check if still positive, we do the cut the disinfections again and we check rechecking again. But if we don't find any positive case, we can raise the pig after that. That's our experience on uh, raising our pigs again after the outbreaks at our farm. So in conclusion, I would like to share that this biosecurity at for prevent ASF is very important that every farm has to be strict on biosecurity and no, no case no other case that can uh, prevent the ASF. That's why the, uh, we have to take all the sample, environmental sample from the farm before we decide to raise the AS, the raise the pig again. So this is uh, about M's pig that I would like to share uh, for the, uh, how to prevent or how to manage our people during the ASF and how to prevent our farm from the outbreak of ASF. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Laville, about this very informative uh, presentation on people management during ASF and repopulation. So again, thank you very much, and we will see you later
during the Q&A session. So now, Rob, who is our third speaker today? Okay, thank you, Jonathan. Our third speaker is the Territory Manager of Olmix China. He joined Olmix in 2002 after a few years of study in France and work in different swine farms in Brittany, France for about one year before going back to China in 2003. Our speaker have 18 years of working experience in swine sector in China, and currently he is working with about 60% of the top 20 swine groups in China. Ladies and gentlemen, to provide an ASF update in China and share their experiences in vaccination, I am glad to introduce to you Mr. Lu Nan. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am the country manager of Olmix in China. So today I would like to share some uh, information and some updates uh, uh, about the AF ASF in China. Um, here is the general, a general introduction of ASF in China and its own impact. You know, the, it's all, all of us, we know that the first official case, is, case announced in China was in the, at the beginning of 2018 in the northeast of the country. However, four months later, the first case announced in the south of China, which was Guangdong province, uh, in December. So it means only uh, four months of time. And uh, the disease actually um, was quickly uh, spreaded uh, all over the country, only within a half year of time. You can see on the map, uh, all the country turned red, uh, only within a few months of time. So uh, actually, um, officially, the um, numbers of live hawks in 2019 dropped by 40% compared with the previous year. That was not really official, but all the from all the information we collected in the, in the field, that was the, 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 the reality. Um, you let's see the, the high risk factors. Uh, in this case, we, we separate the, the risks from the north to the south, because the conditions are not diff not the same. You know, in the north of China, uh, winter time is the most risky uh, period because it's harder to disinfect of all the uh, facilities, especially vehicles due to the low temperature because it's freeze, uh, frozen uh, outside. And also ASF virus can be survived in very low temperature for a long time. So that's, that's why we have, we had more challenge in the winter time in north of the country, but actually it's not the case in the, in the Southeast of Asia, especially in Philippines. Uh, however, in the south of the country, you know, like in Guangdong and all the provinces around, it's really the, the rainy season. Uh, because um, the, let's, let's see that the efficiency of the disinfection is not easy, not easy to handle. And also to, to dry the, the facilities and, and the vehicles, it's a big challenge. And another point is after the, the big rains, after flooding, the risks of the virus spreading by water. And you know, they, um, some farms, many of farms, where they got problem, they buried the, the cut, the cow, cow uh, pigs uh, in the production seat. So after the, um, the flooding, we have a big, big concern, big risk of the, of water. And also ASF virus can be survived longer in high humidity environments. So that's why in the rainy season, let's say in China, starting from the April, uh, March, April, and until the early summer is the big, biggest, the riskier moment. 
period of time here. Um, the, um, the high risk, um, if we separate it by the different uh, geographic areas, uh, we can see we got higher risks in flat areas, in flat areas, sorry. Uh, you know, the, the, in the flat area, uh, we have well-developed transportation system, higher movement of people and vehicles. And the, the most important thing is uh, the areas near by slaughterhouses are the most dangerous place. And the fact is, we realized in the, some regions in China, in the, in the mountain areas, uh, we had lower density of population, a low movement, lower movement of people and vehicles, and we got less problem of ASF. People think the mountains may be a natural barrier. And of course, the, the lower risk, lower risks of vehicle spreading due to the flooding, because in the mountain area, especially farms in the in a, a high mountains, of course, we don't have the problem of a flooding. That's why, for instance, in China, we have less problem in the Yunnan province. Yunnan is the area next to Myanmar and north of Vietnam and north of Laos. Um, here is some uh, peak press uh, in the recent years. Uh, the reason I want to show you these figures, you know, you can see uh, firstly um, from the uh, the orange orange uh, line is the the price of this year, from January until now. Uh, we had big drop of peak price in the country, and today the, the peak price is almost lower than the production cost, the break-even point. And because when we had a big drop of this one population, uh, the peak price went up. You see in the 2019, the dark blue line, um, the peak price went up. And the whole, in the whole year of 2020, the price was really high. And during this period of time, there were a lot of investment in the uh, injected in the swine industry. So many uh, hot money injected in the, in the, in the setting up new facilities. And that's why actually after one year and a half, two years, uh, we had a big, um, uh, bigger production. Uh, according to the official figures, uh, until the beginning of the year, uh, the, the total numbers of uh, hawk in China um, is almost like 97% compared. with 2017. The um, so next slide, let's speak of them some point um, uh, regarding the solutions against the ESF in China. Uh, you know, the, um, the total culling of farms at the beginning actually is the classical way to treat the ASF and some serious disease. Because at that, at that time, the classical uh, swan, uh, African swine fever uh, got very high mortality. And also, another point is, uh, people did not have enough experience and neither the field test at that time. And after, when we had more um, uh, experience, especially with the popularization of, uh, of the, the PCR tests or different ways of test. Of course, with the more trainings in farms, 
and could uh, actually do the accurate uh, culling. So in China, we call it the tooth extraction. Extraction means that we take out only the positives. So the taking out the, the uh, accurately only positive in a room or in a batch based on the routine test. So meaning that the farms had have to to make the test all the time. Um, some of the farms, of course, they achieved to 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 be totally negative, and some coughed and introduced the new pigs at the same time. You know, they, they do the cutting and they they, uh, they introduce the new pigs uh, at the same time. But why? Because the pig price was so high. People want to catch up the the the, the production to have the pigs available to sell. Uh, but in this case, it was more applicable in a, in a big facility, big uh, big production sites. And another point is the um, application of non-authorized vaccines, because this part actually uh, officially we don't say. But uh, next slide, I will show you more more in details. Um, uh, regarding to the, the the vaccines in China, uh, according to the different uh, information, uh, we had two types: inactivated vaccines, which should be a uh, safer. Uh, the second one is the um, gen uh, deleted vaccines. We removed, I think, um, more or less perhaps five or six MGF and the one CD2V. The consequence. Uh, the consequence, firstly, uh, uh, we got new uh, variant strains found in the, in the, in the country. And um, the totally uh, uh, mortality was lowered down, but still in the high weighted peaks because we had more mortality, uh, um, mortality, not in the young animals, but more in the higher weighted pigs like uh, fattening and uh, south. And with the new um, variant strains, um, the, uh, we found that uh, the incubation period is much longer as it used to be. It's much harder it's harder to be de detected and to apply the accurate COVID. We had also uh, realized we realized that we had uh, in in farms after the vaccination there was a big impact in the reproduction. So the cells they had only few born alive. So finally, the farms they realized if they found more or less twenty percent of positives in a farm. There's no solutions. They must cow all animals. So the suggestion: don't believe that they may work. Don't please, don't try. We have to give the um, uh, the uh, the study of vaccines, AF, ASF vaccines, to the scientists. But actually, the, um, the, the, we, we, it was the, coming from some universities, some professors. They thought it, it may work, and also they applied in uh, some swan groups, big swan groups. So we, had, we got a big loss in the, in the, in the, um, uh, many of the <coughs> farm their farms. So anyway, don't believe that for the time being. Uh, regarding the repopulation, you know, the, the classical repopulation, uh, as you know from many, uh, from Europe, uh, cow and uh, repopulate after all the necessary procedures. Of course, we, ha we had many successful cases, but some of them, let's say many of them, recontaminated too. But the, we don't know it's from internal or external incidents. Uh, something we have to be aware, uh, as I mentioned, 
many farms they bury uh, cow pigs in the in their production sites, which were not profitably treated. As you know, in in China or in the, in the Asian countries, we we lack of uh, land. We cannot bury all the dead animals or all the pigs uh, outside of the uh, the production site. We don't have enough land, but. The, the fact is you know, they, 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 they did it in a sh short time and they did not treat perfectly, especially, you know, in a uh, flight area in the southern part of the country where after the flooding, that's a big concern of the of the virus in, in the water. The second point is the um, flies, rats, mice, uh, you know, they are not easy to well control. But we're in, a, in some Chinese study uh, and also some uh, tests done by the, by the uh, some swan groups, they found uh, the ASF virus in, a, in on fly, on rats, on mice. Yes, like we have some, some publication on it. So we have to, to try our best to, to control on, on, on these things. And also the rainy season is the most dangerous period in, um, in the south of China. I think it's more or less the same situation uh, in some countries. Mm -hmm. um, what people they did is they actually they, they started to introduce limited number of youths or female fattening pigs and continue to inseminate if they are negative. Because you know the people they want to, to to be safe, to, to keep the, the, the uh, a limited number of animals to be alive, um, but it's time at the same time when the when the pig price was high, uh, they should have some some pigs available to sell. So they tried to to introduce at the beginning only some females, some girls, or very often only the uh, the, the the female piglets or the fattening pig uh, fattening uh, pigs. But they, they, they inseminate and they try if they, if they, it works. And finally, they may have mm, uh, pig less or, uh, or pigs to sell after. And also, the, um, it's important to keep all the uh, able bodied females for reproduction, <laughs> meaning that um, try to limit and um, to introduce any pigs from outside unless uh, you have the reliable real PCR test showing that they are uh, negative. So uh, during, the, uh, I think more than one year in the whole China, we mobilized all the uh, able-bodied female pigs, the fattening pigs, give them the right to be a, a mother. So that was the case. Um, uh, I, uh, last and also some uh, in the big, especially in the big production sites, they, they, they did accurate carving and repopulating at the same time because they have different production uh, areas. They, uh, they apply the batch management. So they, they, many of them, they succeed to make the accurate carving in uh, some positive area. But on the other side, they, they try to repopulate at the same time. But it's only the case in the big production sites. But after, in case of the, uh, you know, the variant the strains, uh, it, it's, it's harder to do it. It's almost impossible. Because of the, the it's very, it's more difficult to, to test the variant strains by the, the classical PCR test. But anyway, the, the, what we see in the country, you know, the, uh, this one, the total number of, uh, of hawk went back to, to, to the level of 2017, meaning that the country now we have pigs. We have almost enough pigs for the consumption uh, that 
we see many of our customers they, they, they will succeed they succeed in a, in a population so it's not an impossible mission it's later on uh, and um, uh, let's say uh, philip will introduce you the more in details and you know the organic matters especially manure have to be totally cleaned out which is the most important things and drying is essential the asf virus cannot be active long in the dry conditions how to deal with cold pigs is crucial not only in your own farm but also be aware of uh, the farms around should not be uh, should not have the many dead and bad pigs buried in the in the in the field uh, all water treatment is, is extremely necessary as you know the, the after the flooding uh, it's a uh, money problem come from the from water <laughs> and how to um uh, will disinfect the vehicles is a challenge in the rainy season but we must find right solutions the rainy season is not an excuse but we have to to try our, our way to dry, dry them dry the, the facilities indoor and outdoor facilities which in, in, in contact with pigs as well as the treatment of flies rats, mice and the small farms or uh, let's say uh, or farms with less pigs less stuff have more chance to be survived and after the repopulation for sure uh, because of less contact with outside so anyway uh, try to uh, manage people okay that's all i want to share with you and thank you for your attention thank you good afternoon Okay. Thank you so much, Lunan, for updating us on the ASF status in China. It was indeed very interesting to see the solutions implemented by China and their corresponding effect or impact. The total depopulation, tooth extraction, and even the use of unauthorized vaccines. A fair warning about the experience of China in using these unauthorized vaccines. Its consequences on an end on how, instead of being a solution, it actually worsened the situation there in China. I'm sure there will be a lot of questions later on, so we will definitely see you in the question and answer portion. Now, we've heard lessons and stories from our speakers from France, Cambodia, and China. Now, let's hear the insights and updates on the situation of our local industry, swine industry. So starting off from our fourth speaker, Jonathan. Thank you, Rob. So yes, our fourth speaker today took doctor of veterinary medicine at the University of the Philippines, Dilaman, in, and in 1980, he obtained his Master of Science in Animal Health degree at Royal Veterinary College, University of London. He is currently the Asia Veterinary Consultant of Pig Improvement Company and Editorial Consultant of the Philippine Veterinary Drug Directory. A renowned swine veterinary consultant in the country, fellow of the Philippine College of Swine Practitioners, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Max Montenegro. A pleasant day to everyone, colleagues, ladies, and gentlemen. Before I proceed, allow me to introduce myself. I am Dr. Max Montenegro, a fellow of the Philippine College of Swine Practitioner and a consultant of PIC Philippines. It has almost been two years to a day when ASF first hit the Philippines. Well, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I have been tasked to review our efforts to control ASF from the point of view of vet swine practitioners who are involved in the fight versus ASF. For the next few minutes, I will be presenting the advances and challenges we have experienced in the control of ASF. If you are hearing thunder in the background, it is because the god of thunder, Thor, have chosen to chime in in this presentation. The adoption of Bantai ASF sa Barangay as a national program to control ASF was a step in the right direction from our point of view. 
Bantay ASF sa Barangay is a project of the Philippine College of Swipe Practitioners, which aims to strengthen farm biosecurity, surveillance, and monitoring to control the spread of ASF. It also sets a standard for farm repopulation to minimize the risk of ASF reintroduction in areas that had been affected by ASF. This was first presented to the Department of Agriculture in November of 2019 and to swine veterinarians during the 87th PBMA Annual Convention and Scientific Conference in Davao City in February 2020. A year later, Bantay ASF sa Barangay has been adopted by the, by the Department of Agriculture as the national program to control ASF and has been aptly renamed as Babay ASF. Private government partnerships have proven to be effective in the control of ASF. In the province of Batangas, the Philippine College of Swine Practitioner joined forces with the International Training Center for Pig Husbandry, the Provincial Veterinary Office and City Veterinary Offices, the PBMA Batangas Chapter, Hug Racers Association, and Livestock Traders Association to implement Bantay ASF sa Barangay. Immediately after the signing of uh, the Memorandum of Agreement among the LGUs and stakeholders at ITCPH, the Batangas ASF Technical Working Group Team Red immediately went into action. From the outset, the ASF Technical Working Group Red of Batangas set their goal of converting Batangas from red to yellow by December 2021. In Northern Mindanao, the Philippine College of Swine Practitioner, with the support of Wishum ABM Cares, committed to support the control of ASF in selected pilot barangays of Iligan City and Misamis Oriental. The project will be led by the City Veterinarian of Iligan and the Provincial Veterinarian of Misamis Oriental. We also had the cooperation of the Normin Hug Association and the PBMA Normin Chapter. Bandai ASF sa Barangay seeks to empower the local veterinary units, meaning the provincial veterinarian, city, and municipal vets. Important to realize from the very outset that the provincial veterinarian and the city vets should take the lead to ensure the success of the project. Also, the cooperation of the local government units down to the barangay should be present from the very beginning, otherwise the project is not likely to succeed. One of the notable achievements of Batay ASF sa Barangay is the creation of awareness on the mind of stakeholders on the role of biosecurity in the prevention of ASF. In the absence of an effective vaccine versus ASF, biosecurity is the only tool available to reduce the risk of ASF introduction to a farm or an area. As a result, it is now recognized that farms should have at least a biosecurity level 1 classification to be able to repopulate or operate. To implement the objectives of Babay ASF, the Agricultural Training Institute of the Department of the Agriculture, with the support of the PCSP and private veterinary volunteers, trained an army of barangay biosecurity officers nationwide to conduct ASF surveillance, monitoring, and implement farm biosecurity. The barangay biosecurity officers were trained to recognize clinical signs of ASF, collect blood and fecal swabs, and environmental swabs to detect ASF virus. These skills that were learned will be important and will be used to support the repopulation efforts of the government in the countryside. The preceding slides clearly demonstrated that the, Bant the Bantay ASF sa Barangay program contributed significantly in the successful control of ASF in Batangas and Iligan City. Secondly, private government partnership was also instrumental in preventing the spread of ASF. Empowerment and local knowledge of uh, local veterinarians in the Provincial Veterinary Office, the City Veterinary Office, or Municipal Agricultural Offices, and involvement of the local government units up to the barangay level contributed much in preventing the spread of ASF. However, 
challenges still remain. First and foremost, there is a need for more barangay biosecurity officers to implement surveillance and monitoring and regular assessment of biosecurity of smallholder farms. There is also a need for, some, for financial support to implement these projects. One of the challenges for the fight against ASF is striking a balance between ASF control, support for swine producers, and satisfying demand for affordable pork. Previously, to control ASF, farms within a 500 meter radius or one kilometer of an infected farm are automatically uh, culled or stamped out. With the implementation of Bantai ASF sa barangay, this is not a practice anymore. No. Farms within 500 or 1 kilometer radius of an infected farm are not stamped out or culled automatically for as long as they have tested uh, negative to ASF in previous surveillance conducted by the provincial veterinarian, the city veterinarian, or the municipal agriculture office. This has contributed materially for the increase of supply of locally produced pork. However, with the reduction of uh, tariffs on imported pork to satisfy the demand for affordable pork by the consumers, local uh, hog raisers have protested and have demanded for similar support for reduction in tariff of materials or raw materials used for feeds which constitute 75 to 80 percent of their cost of production. They have also asked for a subsidy for the purchase of breeders for the repopulation effort of farms that had been affected by ASF. Moreover, they, these farmers also have uh, requested for rapid payments of, or in, of indemnification for animals that were culled due to ASF. Another challenge in the fight against ASF is protecting gains in ASF control. For example, in the province of Batangas, many municipalities have been infected by uh, ASF as have been classified as red zones. However, recently, five municipalities and one city was able to exit from quarantine and had been locally declared as pink zones or buffer zones. Other municipalities are expected to follow and soon the uh, province of Batangas, the whole province of Batangas can be classified as a buffer zone and therefore pink zone and they would be on their way of being locally declared as yellow zone by the end of the year. To maintain this ASF feed free status, surveillance, monitoring, and uh, biosecurity check of farms will continue. In addition, slaughterhouses and meat markets will be also part of the surveillance so that the uh, entry of ASF or reintroduction of ASF can be prevented. However, this will require the uh, cooperation of neighboring provinces and all stakeholders within the region. For the province of Batangas, this will be a conundrum born out of success because if they really succeed, they will be a yellow zone in a sea of red. To work out this problem, there will be a need for LGUs within the region to work together to exceed for quarantine and duplicate the success of Batangas. Logistics and supply problems for the uh, constituents should be uh, looked into to prevent a uh, lack of, uh, of, uh, of supply of meat in the, in the market. Alternatively, there will be a need for ASFP compartments to be uh, formed to address the supply chain problem. In summary or in conclusion, we know that the road to recovery is not going to be an easy path. However, we have learned from our successes that we can control ASF even in the absence of an effective vaccine against the disease. The Bantay ASF sa Barangay program is an effective tool in succeeding or in controlling ASF. Okay? There are many challenges. There are many challenges still in front of us. And one of it actually is the lack 
of uh, Barangay Bayo Security Officer or manpower to implement surveillance, monitoring, and continued assessment of biosecurity of farms. However, if we work together, if we safeguard the advances that we have made in the face of challenges that uh, is before us, if we work as a nation to eradicate, we can win the war against ASL. Thank you for your time and for joining us this afternoon. A pleasant. All right. So thank you very much, Dr. Max Montenegro, for this very uh, intuitive and, and very uh, informative presentation. Um, so now to present our fifth speaker and final speaker of the, this webinar today, let me pass back the screen to you, Job. Thank you, Jonathan. Our fifth and last speaker obtained his Doctor of Veterinary Medicine degree from Gregorio Araneta University in the year 1996 and started his career as a farm veterinarian at Romina Farms. He has been in the government service for 24 years, starting as agricultural technologist of Municipal Local Government Unit of Santa Maria Bulacan, and now as a provincial veterinarian of Provincial Government of Bulacan. To share updates on the current status and repopulation efforts to rebuild the swine industry of Bulacan, let us all welcome Dr. Voltaire Basina. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Voltaire Basina, uh, currently the Provincial Veterinarian of Bulacan. I'm here today to present to you our uh, repopulation efforts here in Bulacan for our swine industry. To give you a brief history of uh, ASF in Bulacan, uh, it was in August uh, 16, 2019, for the Bureau of Animal Industry Quarantine Officer, Dr. Romeo Manilini informed us that uh, pigs in Rodrigo Susal tested positive for uh, the ASF virus. Unfortunately, some of those hogs uh, in Rodrigo Susal uh, were sold in Giginto, Bulacan. So DA, through BAE, called for an emergency meeting that night. Uh, informing us of uh, the matter at hand. Uh, the following day, um, I instructed my staff to conduct an ocular inspection of the uh, area. Uh, actually, uh, Giginto is uh, famous for its stockyards. Uh, they have five stockyards uh, in Giginto, in Barangay Pritin. Uh, when we visited the, the stockyards for uh, inspection, uh, only three of uh, the five stockyards had uh, pigs inside of them. Uh, we immediately looked for ASF signs and symptoms uh, in the pigs that were present in the stockyards. Unfortunately, we did not find any pigs uh, carrying any signs or symptoms of African swine fever. Uh, but uh, because uh, it was uh, very vital for us to determine if uh, those pigs are infected, uh, we immediately collected 35 blood samples uh, from the three stockyards in Giginto and we submitted them to the diagnostic laboratory of the Bureau of Animal Industry. Around 11 p.m. Uh, around 11 p.m. that night, uh, they gave us the salts and six of the 35 blood samples tested positive for African swine fever. Um, the following day, it was a Sunday, uh, we called all of the hogs in the stockyards and the piggeries inside of the barangay in Giginto. Uh, to give you an idea of how many uh, pigs we stamped out during the ASF outbreak in Bulacan. Uh, here's a rundown of all of the municipalities and city that uh, were affected uh, in our province. Uh, we had uh, stamped out 87,743 hogs owned by 6,000 
more than 6,000 farmers in 18 municipalities in the city. So after our depopulation in 2020, 2019 and 2020, uh, we believe that we are now um, ready for the repopulation program as set by the Bureau of Animal Industry. Uh, they have coined it uh, Baba ASF, uh, and our province is uh, committed to adhering to that uh, Baba ASF program for our repopulation uh, efforts. So um, we have already distributed um, disinfectants and cleaning materials to our smallhold farmers. Uh, we have all, we have also started our environmental swabbing prior to the Sentinel program. Uh, our ordinance is uh, currently in its uh, second reading. Hopefully, uh, uh, they would be approved uh, within the month. Uh, it, uh, our ordinance is uh, uh, focused mainly on our farmers' strict adherence to biosecurity level one and level two, uh, set by the Bantay ASF sa barangay. Uh, before any farmer could uh, engage in hog farming, uh, they have to adhere by the ASF via uh, uh, security level one and level two for all of the, the farmers. Uh, so, what are we doing right now? Uh, right now, we're conducting. Uh, environmental swabbing. We have already finished uh, conducting uh, environmental swabs for 57 barangays in 13 municipalities. And that is through the collaboration with the CLSU and CENTRAD. Yeah, we've also collected uh, water samples. Uh, and all of them, uh, the environmental swab and the water samples, were tested through nanogold. So that's, uh, I think it's uh, through fluorescent uh, yeah, assay. Uh, we have chosen five municipalities as our pilot uh, towns and cities, uh, namely the RT, Garzagaray, Tangat, San Jose del Monte, and Santa Maria. These five municipalities. Uh, will undergo environmental swabbing and uh, biosecurity uh, assessment. Uh, we have uh, already conducted uh, briefings on our staff last uh, June 25 regarding the task at hand. Uh, we've already given them their assigned municipalities. And uh, last June 29, we started our uh, farmers interview and farm biosecurity audit as stated in uh, Bantang ASF Subarangay. And we've also conducted uh, our first environmental swap last June 29. Uh, our pilot municipality is Santa Maria Bulacan. Uh, follow suit will be San Jose del Monte, North Sagaray, DRT, and Angat. Uh, we plan to finish uh, all of these five municipalities by August 21. So after August 21, uh, hoping uh, we're hoping that uh, all municipalities will test negative for ASF, so that we could be ready from our graduation from red to pink zone. So uh, aligned with the uh, protocols of uh, the Baba ASF program. Uh, we have also started registering our farmers, hog farmers, with the RSBSA or the registry system for basic sectors in agriculture. Uh, we have also uh, set up our appointed our BBOs or uh, 
biosecurity, barangay biosecurity officers. Um, all of the farmers who want to join the repopulation would undergo training and seminars so that they would understand the responsibilities uh, before uh, repopulating or before uh, participating in the repopulation efforts. Uh, we have a unique um, situation here in Bulacan. I think uh, this situation is uh, quite unique here in Region 3, uh, not only in Bulacan, but in the whole, in re uh, the whole of Region 3. Um, we have surviving uh, farms inside the red zone. Uh, so not all of the farms uh, inside the red zone were stamped out. Those commercial farms uh, with proven biosecu uh, biosecurity uh, were not stamped out. Uh, they remained uh, free from ASF as, uh, as exhibited by the monthly testings, uh, weekly testings that we have done during the ASF, uh, during the ASF outbreak. So we believe that uh, these farms are capable of uh, expanding and uh, increasing our uh, hog population. Uh, the only problem is the they don't have that much uh, money left in there to start their repopulation or expansion program. So uh, we we would like to request the government or the National Livestock uh, Program. Actually, we have submitted this proposal to the uh, Ruth Sunako of the National Livestock Program to maybe consider including this uh, protocol uh, in the Baba ASF uh, program. Because uh, right now, the commercial farms inside the red zone cannot avail of the uh, loan program uh, by the land bank and DBP because uh, one of the requirements is for uh, the municipality that they they belong uh, be graduated from red zone to pink zone. So um, we believe that uh, we could uh, fast track this uh, repopulation by uh, giving them or including them in the loan program. Uh, however, uh, we, we believe that uh, certain protocols still has to be established before they can be included in the protocol, uh, in the loan program, even if they are included in the red zone. So we have suggested the following to Dr. Uh, Rukmik Latsunako uh, for farms inside the red zone that were not affected by ASF. So for farms inside the red zone that were not affected by ASF since the beginning of the outbreak, the following protocols must be accomplished before qualifying for the loan program. Number one is uh, random blood sampling and nasal swab from existing pig stocks. Uh, it must be done twice, uh, two weeks apart. Environmental swabs, including water samples, should be done twice, one week apart. And the passing grade in the biosecurity level two, as required by Baba ASF, uh, should be accomplished by the participating farm. Uh, backyard farms within 500 meter radius of the farm should test negative for environmental swab and water samples, sample tests as well. Uh, it should be done twice and it should be done one week apart. The farm must be 500 meters away from any ground zero. And a written ad a letter addressed to the National Livestock Program uh, expressing their interest to avail of the loan program. Then, of course, their business permits has to be uh, updated. So those are currently our 
uh, activities and efforts uh, for our repopulation program. Uh, we know that uh, this is a gigantic task ahead as uh, the hug, pop, uh, hug business or hug industry of Bulacan. So it's a very big uh, industry. Yeah, it was devastated really by ASF. And we hope that uh, through these efforts, uh, we can start rebuilding our uh, hug industry. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doc Voltaire, for these updates on the activities, efforts, and strategies being implemented in the province of Bulacan. We are with you in looking forward for the uh, whole province of Bulacan to be converted as well from red to pink. All right. Now, before we proceed with the Q&A portion, let us first enjoy another exciting part of the program, a raffle draw. So here, five lucky winners from the list of registered participants will get headsets as prizes. Are you ready? Okay. So let me share the roulette. Okay. All right, so uh, to win headsets, we have five lucky names that will be uh, drawn in this raffle draw. Let's start. Again, while waiting, you can uh, feel free to add any questions or Q&A box. Just to specify to the speaker. All right, first winner, we have Jan Marie. Baldoman. Congratulations, Jan Marie Baldoman. Our second winner. All right. Congratulations, Patricia Ashley Rosales. Okay. Now to our third winner. We have Felipe Caro. Congratulations, Mr. Felipe Caro. And to our fourth winner, we have Isa Michelda Tarpin. Okay, last. Okay, we have Neil Peralta. All right, congratulations, sir, and congratulations to all the winners. Jonathan, back to you. All right, congrats to all the winners. Our representative will contact you on how to claim your, your prizes. Okay, so to our participants, please stand by. We will still have, we will still have a second round of raffle later, okay? And now we are ready and we will open the question and answer session. So let us all welcome back our five esteemed, esteemed speakers, Mr. Philip Grio, Mr. Lee Laville. We also have Mr. Lunan from China, Dr. Max Montenegro, and Dr. Voltaire Basinang from the Philippines. Good afternoon, our esteemed speakers. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. All right, so uh, let me. Uh, good, afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon. All right, so now uh, let me read the first question. Okay. So our first question is for uh, uh, Dr. Philip Grill. Dr. Philip, here in the Philippines, there are still many farmers who raise pigs in their backyard. Do you feel they can they could prevent ASF? If so, how? Well, the backyard farm can be very dangerous because it can be a very big storage of this disease. But 
the basic uh, rule for the, for this backyard is to avoid any contact with outside. I repeat, and uh, Lunan say also the same thing that me. Uh, if you uh, cancel all the contact with outside, it's possible to have a backyard. But if you have a lot of contact with outside, backyard can be very dangerous. Okay. And for example, in Russia, uh, the Russian government tried to, to, to kill the, the ISF virus by uh, culling all the backyard farm. Okay, because there is a big link, because in Russia, the backyard has very often outside a farm with a full contact with whiteboards and they are contaminated full time. But I don't know Philippine uh, activity, but if backyard farm has no contact with outside or less contact than possible, it's possible to make a good job. If you allow some contact with outside, backyard can be very dangerous because you can have ASF virus with uh, no sign and you can contaminate a lot of time all the other farm. Okay? Okay. Thank you very much, Philip, for, uh, for your insights on that. Indeed, uh, controlling ASF in backyard could be very difficult, but it would be possible if we can ensure that uh, they will not have any contact from, from the outside. Okay? Yes. All right, thank you. Um, uh, Jonathan, will you do the honor for the second question? Again, for our speakers, we, we would like to invite you to please open up your, your cameras as well. Thank you so much. Jonathan? All right. So, yeah, the next question is uh, to you, uh, Mr. Laville. So, uh, and it is this one that we got from the participants. How much has ASF affected the Cambodian swine industry? Are there any government support in the repopulation effort? Okay, thank you very much for the question. First, uh, about the ASS outbreak in Cambodia, within two months, it's outbreak through five provinces nearby Vietnam border, just within two months. And two months later, let's say it's outbreaks almost all over the country. I mean, all the provinces have the case, just big case and small case. But the outbreak in summary from the government is approximately uh, 20 to 25% of loss during uh, the, the outbreak. But the outbreak have occurred approximately one year that the serious case and later it come down in 2020 up to end of 2020 is almost no more case. And it start 2021 until now, still have a very little case, just a few, a few one or two cases. Since January until now, we found only uh, uh, two or three cases only in Cambodia. And the repopulation is a lot also, even though it's outbreak only on the backyard and small scale farm, but not the commercial farm. The commercial farm less outbreak. That's why the recover of the repopulation is fast also. And any support from the government, all the destroys, there are no support from the government. Only the association, we call Cambodian Livestock Raiser Association, that support some small backyard farmer with some disinfection. And later, Unspeak, who support the genetics that we uh, provide them, we sell them the breeders that let the backyard farm can raise their pigs again. Uh, uh, since last year, we can sell thousands of uh, uh, plant stock to the backyard farm to raise the pigs again. That's why the population increased a lot during end of 2020 until now. And the support from the government only prevents the import pigs that's a lot already for us, the farmer, because you know, Cambodia is the import country. We import live pig from Thailand and Vietnam. And you know that these both countries still occur, the ASF still have case, and we lack our supply in the country. And we import a lot from these both countries. But however, 
for these two years, the government has farmer a lot on uh, 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 checking all the import with license uh, and destroy a lot of pig from Vietnam or from Thailand that they import with their ASF case. That, that the government have the Cambodian razor a lot already, even though they have not pay any money to the backyard or, or, or semi-commercial farm. But we are happy already that can uh, protect the, the import pigs that the, the pig that import to Cambodia have to be free from ASF. That's what we got there. Thank you for my answer. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Lavin, for this question. Um, next one for from your side, Job. Okay, we have here a question for uh, Mr. Lunan. So Lunan, you have uh, yeah. mentioned about accurate culling early in your presentation. Now the question yeah. is, what is the success rate of accurate culling in China? Oh, uh, actually, um, the culling rate, um, successful rate, in uh, there's no uh, official data on the on this point, you know, it's a national level, but in the big farms, when they have, they are very equipped with the PCR and they, they are very well trained, you know, to, to test in the saliva, you know, the, by the, uh, the successful rate uh, was quite, uh, quite high on the, the successful rate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I mean, uh, the, the, the classical uh, ESF virus, but not the, the after the, the not raise the vaccination, but you know. Okay, Lunan, by, by saying high successful rate, are we talking about 80 plus or 90 plus? Uh, 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 no, it's not, not high, as high at that, that level. But you know, the, um, uh, the, uh, sometime when the, the farms, they are, they are succeed, they succeed, but you know, the second uh, outbreak of, or even third outbreak, we never know where it come from the problems. You know, sometimes well, they, 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 they did a good job, they started with a totally negative and everything's going on well, but you know, six months later, or or I don't know, but maybe four months later or eight months later, they got contaminated again. But sometimes it's not the problem from the, the, the production site. The problem always come from outside. So, for the second, you know, the, the uh, outbreak, uh, people can could not really know where comes the problem. But mm -hmm. you know, the the but after the the um, all the the, the license layer we had, normally the the, the big groups the um, in China, they uh, they paid a lot of attention on it. So, so now it's a uh, it's it's not as complicated as it used to be. You know, it's, if if today we we speak of the, the so, uh, to clean out a, a farm to start from zero, compared with two years ago, it's not the, not the same. Sorry. Okay, so uh, the expected success rate is still highly variable depending yeah. on the specific farm doing this strategy. Okay. Yeah, but uh, the, to be careful of the second outbreak, the, the problem very often is not come from the production seat, site; it's from outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Lunan. I'm um, Jonathan. The next question, please. Yeah, so the next question is addressed to uh, you, uh, Doug Voltaire. So, and it is uh, the following one. So, what is your estimate for the whole of Bulacan to turn from red to yellow? And also, what will be needed to achieve this? Doug Voltaire, uh, could you please turn on your microphone? Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, let me answer the second question first. Uh, for us to achieve this, uh, we believe that, uh, we have to adhere strictly to the Babay ASF program of the uh, Department of Agriculture. Uh, our target, uh, our first we're targeting to graduate from red to pink uh, within this year. And hopefully uh, by the first quarter of uh, next year, if all goes well, uh, we could graduate from pink to yellow. So by hopefully by uh, the first quarter of next year, we would uh, join Batangas in becoming yellow. 
All right, thank you, Doug Walter, for this uh, timeline and really uh, informative uh, uh, answer. So, Jap, next one. Okay. Uh, the next question is for uh, Dr. Max Montenegro. Doc Max, bye bye ASF biosecurity level one seems to be difficult for backyard farmers to achieve. In your opinion, can they survive and fight ASF with something less difficult? Doc Max? Well, thank you for that question. Uh, first of all, I, I, I believe that uh, the biosecurity classification for backyard farm, which is level one, is not difficult to achieve. Because you have a total of, uh, we have enumerated in the uh, PCSP biosecurity uh, uh, level classification scorecard, no? 42 risk areas. And we are only recommending uh, uh, nine, which is three more than the six gates of hell of uh, Mr. Uh, Philip. Okay. So I do not believe if they just, if they just read through the, uh, the risk, no? I don't think it's difficult to, uh, to survive. And if you notice, Dr. Voltaire even has a stricter classification, which is biosecurity level two. Now, we started actually uh, Bantay ASF sa Barangay. We wanted to work with uh, Bulacan, but we were overtaken by events. We were supposed to launch uh, Bantay ASF in March of 2019, but biglang nag-lockdown eh. So after that, the rest is uh, history. You know? But just the same, but just the same, uh, I don't think it is difficult. And we can, the backyard farms, uh, I like the recommendation of Mr. Philip. No, we, we, we in the Philippines, for, for everybody knows in the Philippines that the backyard farm is the uh, economic engine in the countryside. That is why backyard raising is very popular. If we remove uh, backyard farms, uh, well, I, but there will be economic loss in the countryside. No, but having said that, it is also important that we level up, we we'll improve the husbandry in uh, in the countryside. For example, in Mindanao, the practice, for example, of uh, tying the the sow under the the tree, no, and then they would like and it was been hit by ASF, and then they would like to repopulate again, but using the same husbandry practices, this cannot be allowed anymore. We have to level up, and that is why it is important that we apply these uh, standards of biosecurity. We call it minimum standards of biosecurity, okay, so that they will be able to uh, to survive. But I repeat, it is not difficult to follow. If only they will read through it, they will see that the six gates of hell of uh, Mr. Philippe is there, but we added three more, which we believe is a uh, risk factor that is present in the Philippines. I hope that answered the question. Okay, thank you very much, Doc Max, for uh, for uh, that clarification. And uh, of course, um, uh, it uh, only um, stresses that uh, our, our backyard uh, farmers can survive ASF, but uh, there there really needs to be some sort of a level up to, to meet these minimum requirements. Okay, all right. So the next question, please, Jonathan. Yeah. So the next question here is addressed to uh, Mr. Laville. So, Mr. Laville, in the presentation you shared to us today, um, in one of your slides, your sentinel pigs are also allowed to go around the grounds. So, the question is the following one. How long is the exposure? Okay, thank you very much for the question. To repopulation the pigs, after we do all the disinfection, and we also do the a environmental lab test for everywhere inside the farm or outside the farm. So the final case that we do for the repopulation is the centennial pigs. At that time, every farm that, that have the case of ASF outbreaks, we do two weeks of centennial pigs. And the pig we select from the ungrowth piglet average around 20 kilograms of pigs. And we raise it inside the buildings and outside the building. We even bring them to the West Pond as well to make sure that all around the farm, there's no virus. That's why we think that two weeks, we separate the pigs by two groups. Once there are six to 10 pigs, three pens inside the house, inside the rooms, we put the feet 
inside the room one day, two day here, and we make them hungry. We don't give them enough food and make sure they go everywhere inside the pens of the buildings. And another group, we put it outside. We put, even though they have the burrits, all the dead pigs, or where we kill the pigs, or where we bring the pigs out, we have to put the feet somewhere there and let the piglet come and eat all the feet or play around in there for two weeks as well. And even we bring to the uh, kennel, along the kennel of the waste go to the pond, we bring them to there. And after two weeks, if no clinical signs, we will take the blood for PCR individual. Every pig, we do the PCR. And during one week, we can do the uh, saliva test by taking the saliva or the manuals by swapping the environmental to check the PCR test, whether if any uh, positive case happen or not. After two weeks, and we take the samples, if there's no case, one week later, we do the disinfection and we can rest the pigs again. That's about the uh, strategy for Sentinel pigs that we do for our MSPIC strategy. Yeah. All right, thank you very much for this uh, confirmation. So yes, if I summarize, average two weeks inside and outside the, the building. So thank you very much for your answer, Dr. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Job, back to you. Thank you. Next question is for you again, uh, Lunan, and uh, this is about vaccine, okay? So although yep. you say uh, never trust ASF vaccine at the moment, but are there any vaccine companies in China finding any success in their vaccine trials? No, actually, the, um, the strength of the, the ASF uh, virus is controlled by the government. By the, um, today, only two institutes in China is authorized. There's one in the north, extreme north, you know, not far from Russia, and one in the south, uh, in Guangzhou, uh, China Southern uh, Agriculture University. And both of them, they have the strength, but you know, they are on the, on the study uh, of the, the, um, the vaccine is uh, uh, more or less controlled by the government. So they are the private and uh, you know, the private companies, I don't think they, uh, we don't think they have the right to, to, to work on it. They are not authorized. So uh, according to the recent news, we have some, uh, um, I think one more step on it, but uh, you know the license we we had in the, in the country is so today nobody want to try, so we wait for the for their for their results, mm -hmm. official results. <laughs> okay, so two, only two authorized um, uh, vaccine trials authorized by the government. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, this is not yet on the production uh, level. No, but I think they, um, uh, according to the, the to the news. Last week, about two weeks ago, uh, in China, they, they gain more more step on it. Yeah. Means that they are they're trying more with more more picks in the field. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I see. Okay, thank you for that yeah. clarification, thank Luna. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah. So next question is uh, for you, uh, Mr. Philip. So the following one about uh, transmission through flies and rodents. So is there inferred uh, because of detection of virus on those animals or the controlled experiments showing solid proof? Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, some study are made in uh, Romania, some study are made also in Denmark and uh, they find uh, 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 SF virus on fly. And in Romania, the last study is not so, so, so old. And they found 50% of flies carried with the ASF virus. So it means that uh, the fly uh, can be a, a way to, trans to transmit the, 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 the disease everywhere. So the best way is to kill the, the or to try to kill most of the fly. It's not so easy. You have to treat uh, the worms into the manure and you have to treat the adult. For the, for the rodent and the mice, it is, uh, and for the rats and for the mice, it's more difficult. I don't remember if we have a, a study uh, about uh, their transmission, but 
as the rats can travel a lot of, as the rats can carry some uh, other disease, he spend a lot of time in manure pit uh, or close to the animal. Uh, rage, uh, pseudorabie. Uh, so I think it is very important to kill or to try to kill all the rats at the same occasion. I, I, I don't remember any study about them, but take care. Uh, I work in China and I saw a lot of uh, sows eat by rats. And it means that uh, they can't contaminate rats the rats can contaminate farms to farm. And for me, it's also the best thing to try to kill most of the rats, okay? All right, thank you, uh, Philippe, for, for this answer. So yes, so really to, to emphasize on this importance of uh, avoiding the propagation of the virus and also avoiding to have the presence of the, the rodents and the flies uh, in, in the building, around the building. So thank yes, you. for mosquitoes, we don't have any studies, but... Uh, it's uh, less important, but fly and rats are very important for me. Okay. All right. Noted. Thank you, Philip. Job to you. Okay. Uh, the next question is uh, directed to Mr. Laville. Mr. Laville, the uh, legislation varies from country to country. Did the uh, Cambodian government require complete culling of the population once the farm is confirmed for a positive case? Okay, thank you very much for the question. I believe if one farm have a case of AFS, the government have to declare and then you have to destroy or depopulation of the pigs at the farm. But you know, uh, lots of farm that we know, they might not declare. But however, if your own farm, you think that you don't sell it, you just, Prevent it, or you want to protect your farm. You have to have your own strategy. First, make sure that this is true. Make sure that you don't. You have to keep the virus only in one place, or you have to control the virus in your farm by depopulation, building by buildings, or pen by pens. When, but if you declare everything to the government that you have the case. So I believe the government will come and stop you do anything. They just ask you to depop everything, everything and cut all the pigs, bury it or burn, whatever. But if you don't sell it and you want to protect your pig, we still have experience. I, we ourselves, we have experience like I share in the presentation. We have four buildings that have outbreak ASF in one building. But finally, we count only one building and another three building is safe. So we call, we chuck the pigs, we bore, it, we bore it the pigs when we see the first clinical signs. And we do everything very fast within one night. 600 pigs bore it within one night and limestone almost 20 tons who are on the ground. And we don't clean any waste inside the building. So the rest three building is safe. We raise that three building until slaughters, until we can sell all the fattening. That's from our experience. Even though we have one buildings, when we do, when we suspect that a rat pig with high temperature inside the buildings, we take the cell liver test. We take the cell liver pen by pens, every pens. When we found one pen positive, the next pen we do culling as well. So we found one pence, we culling three pence together. And then we can keep that whole building. That's our experience. But when you talk about the government, if, you, if they found or we declare that's the case, there's no choice. We have to depopulation everything. We cannot ask them for permission. But the, the government here, we also work with them when we found the case, we used to invite them to check for us many times. But if they found two times case, like one building, they found the case and we depopulation all that pigs and one building we keep. And later, if we found again, they will come and destroy everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see. 
Okay, so at least there is a first chance for, for, from the government. If uh, you think the, the government can assess that you can still control it, the, the government of Cambodia might allow you to, to depopulate just one building. And uh, on the second chance, if uh, proven that you cannot control the, the uh, outbreak, then that's a the time that they will depopulate the whole of the farm. So that's okay. the case in Cambodia, Mr. Labid. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. The next question, uh, Jonathan. Yeah, all right. So uh, the next question is addressed to uh, you, uh, Mr. Lunan. So uh, based from what you shared today to, to our audience, uh, the question yeah. is the following one. So your personal, personal view on recontamination is the source more likely to be internal or external? <clears throat> And how, how do you say internal or external? Internal means inside the farm. Uh, uh, normally the problem, uh, there's two, two uh, different um, uh, situations. I cannot hear Mr. Lunan. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, Hello? yes, Lunan. Go ahead, go yeah. ahead, Lunan. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, actually the, it's all depending on the, on the situation. You know, in South of China, which is the same, uh, similar to Philippines and some countries. You know, they, we had a uh, flooding uh, in in the summertime, rainy season. So during the the uh, the, the outbreak of ASF, after the outbreak, uh, farms they don't have enough land to bury all the, the the animals, and they just put it inside under the the ground inside the production site. So which is the most dangerous uh, situation. So after the, the big rain, uh, the flooding, and the water became uh, very dangerous. So in this case, very often people believe the problem is come from the, the, the in, uh, it's an internal problem. All right, thank you, Lunan, for your uh, confirmation and for your uh, information. So, Job? Okay, the next question again is for you, Lunan. And uh, this is again about the, the vaccines, okay? So uh, Luna, which uh, do you think created more problems? Is it the inactivated or the gene deleted form uh, of vaccine or, or both? Uh, because it's not, it's, not, it's not legal. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes. It, it is not legal. So um, we don't really have the publication, you know, the official publication, even the people speaking in the public, the big di the difference uh, between the, the two, different, di two different kinds of virus, uh, vaccines. So according to the, the, the people in the field, there's no big difference. The big impact consequence on the, the, the vaccine is the reproduction at the, at the very beginning. The reproduction rate, you know, the, it's very poor. And in the, the later, you know, when you have the pig legs, you, you get problem after. And uh, so we don't really have the feedback on the, the, the official feedback on the, the two different vaccines. But anyway, please don't try it. <laughs> okay. So uh, I think it, it makes sense because uh, as you mentioned, these are unauthorized, these are illegal vaccines. And so we do not have, or you do not have the data to, uh, to determine which of these types of vaccines. What, we, what, what you already know from your experience is that uh, either of these types of uh, unauthorized vaccines could be more of a danger and problem than a solution. Okay. Uh, Thank it's, you. It's not, a, it's not a good solution, it's absolutely not. Thank you, Lunan. Jonathan, you. next question. So we are uh, arrived at the end of the question from what I can read in the chat. Uh, so thanks again for all the, the, the participants for sending um, this uh, question. I'm, Jonathan, I think more? we can, I'm sorry. I think we can accommodate uh, more questions. We just uh, receive some from, from Facebook Live as well ah, okay. from our audience. Uh, maybe I, I can read it uh, for us. The one is uh, for Dr. Dr. Voltaire. Um, Dr. Vol Voltaire, are those farms made into uh, stockyards have been part of uh, Babay ASF in Bulacan? Uh, by being part, uh, do you mean uh, have they been tested? 
uh, Doc Job, uh, by being a part, uh, uh, are they referring to the testings? Yeah, yes, yes, Doc, perhaps yes. Yes, uh, some of the stockyards uh, in Bulacan have been tested. Uh, but uh, they will remain to be stockyards e even uh, after the testing. So they won't be part of the Sentinel program and they won't be part of the repopulation program. Mm, okay. Okay. Loud and uh, clear. Thank you, um, Doc Voltaire. Um, uh, we, we would, I'm sure we are, we are appreciating the uh, um, uh, flow of support from our audience, which is why we might be extending uh, some time to, to answer some of these very interesting questions. Um, uh, the next question is for uh, Dr. Um, uh, Montenegro, Dr. Max. Hello, sir. Uh, it's nice to hear the existing intervention done in the province of Batangas and Bulacan. But are uh, those being extended as well in the nearby province of Quezon? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I think uh, what happened in Batangas is just modeling, no? just to prove that uh, Bantay ASF or Babay ASF really can work. Actually, we we would the the uh, the, temp, the Batangas became a template. No, we would like to extend. The PCSP because would like to help out. Would like to volunteer to help out the other provinces needing uh, 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 our support. No? Our support. But actually, the Department of Agriculture through the Provincial Veterinary Office also the Bureau of Animal Industry, they have their uh, cluster, uh, what do you call it? They have their cluster, uh, cluster deeds no? uh, from, the, uh, from, the, from the regions. So you Quezon actually should be part of this uh, 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 support group, support from the Department of Agriculture and the uh, Bureau of Animal Industry. However, if they need additional support from the PCSP, that we would be very willing uh, to do so. Because I've said earlier in my presentation, Patangas cannot exist alone. No? It has to be everybody, all provinces within the region should work together. No? Meaning Quezon, uh, Rizal, Laguna, and Cavite, no? that's region 4A, should be working together to exit from, uh, from red zone, at least from red zone to pink zone first, okay? and then later to yellow. So they have to work together as uh, as, uh, and cooperate as provinces as a region to be uh, successful. Hindi, hindi pwedeng sa presentation ko, sabi ko, by December of 2021, Batangas will be a yellow zone and in a, in, a, in a sea of red zone. Hindi pwedeng ganun. Maraming magiging problema. So, yes, we are willing to help uh, Quezon. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Doc Max, for, for clarifying that. So, uh, in the case of Batangas and Bulacan, we are just starting. These are just models, and uh, we expect that these programs will definitely be extended to other provinces. Of course, the ultimate goal is for the whole country to uh, to graduate from red to pink, eventually yellow to green. Okay, Jonathan, the, um, do you have the next question to our speaker? Yes, so um, the next question is uh, to our other uh speaker from the Philippines, uh, so uh, Doug Walter. So um, the following one, the, following, the question is the following one. So uh, what support in terms of OF repopulation, OF swine in affected area is the government doing? Uh, come again, Jonathan, I, I didn't catch the question. Which, uh, what, which support in terms of OF repopulation is the government doing in the affected area? I think, um, uh, Doc Voltaire, it uh, goes, uh, let, let me just uh, clarify. What support system, uh, what support in terms of repopulation of swine in affected areas is the government doing? I think you, you were able to, to, to uh, discuss it as well on, on your presentation, but perhaps, Doc, you can also uh, enlighten more or go on uh, quickly you know, and, and some of the details on uh, these types of supports that the, the government is extending uh, in terms of the re repopulation. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Dr. Uh, Job. Um, after the uh, environmental swabbing, we'd be, we would uh, initiate the uh, Sentinel program uh, wherein we would uh, try to provide 
our backyard farmers with uh, sentinel pigs. Uh, we would also be supplementing them with feeds. Uh, we'll try to uh, test if they would survive uh, in the backyard uh, setting uh, for 40 days. Then after that, uh, yeah. Uh, we hope that we could uh, declare some municipalities, some barangays and municipalities as uh, pink zones. Uh, and after that, we could uh, encourage uh, more um, backyard racers and commercial farms to repopulate. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Doc Voltaire, for, for enumerating no, quickly these uh, supports that are being extended by the government in terms of uh, the repopulation. Uh, I think the next question goes again to, to Doc Max. So Doc Max, um, uh, what are or the biosecurity support uh, in terms of financial, equipment, medication, or uh, disinfectants is the government giving? So, uh, <laughs> Thank you, Joe, for that question. I think that is difficult for me to answer. I think it would be better for uh, maybe Dr. Voltaire to answer that question because uh, I'm in the private sector, yeah. <laughs> but what I know is that there is the Inspire program, no? Inspire program of the Department of Agriculture, and that the hog raisers would be able to uh, apply for loans from either the Land Bank or the Development Bank of the Philippines. But as far as the other aspects are concerned, I think I would like to refer that question to Dr. Voltaire. If Dr. Voltaire does not mind. Uh, yes, Doc. Uh, could you run by uh, the question by me again? Okay, but, but Walter, the, the question goes that uh, what are the uh, government giving as a support in terms of financial, equipment, or uh, medication and, and disinfectant to, to, the, to our farmers? Well, uh, ever since the outbreak began, we have uh, consistently given, given out uh, disinfectants for free uh, for, uh, to our backyard farmers, our smallhold farmers. We have also conducted uh, trainings and seminars to our uh, biosecurity officers as well as our backyard farmers. Uh, we try to make them understand that uh, hog farming uh, must really change in our province. So we're really trying to uh, uh, focus more on the information campaign uh, for this Baba ASF and uh, biosecurity seminars so that uh, they could uh, repopulate and re-establish their farms responsibly. Uh, as for other supports, uh, yes, uh, Doc Max have already mentioned the uh, INSPIRE program. Uh, so yes, that, that, that's mostly it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much again, Doc Voltaire, for elaborating that. Um, uh, again, we would like to thank this overflowing interest and questions, but unfortunately, we have a very limited time, so we can accommodate only uh, two more last questions. No? And uh, second to the last question is for uh, um, Sir Philip Grio. Philip, would you recommend several uh, types of disinfectants for a successful disinfection program? Also, what are your thoughts? on uh, phenolic detergent disinfectants with good foaming properties? Now, each disinfectant has to be checked with uh, uh, official uh, office against all the disease. So you have to buy disinfectant efficient against ISF. The first, first advice. All are not efficient. So you have to check with your supplier if you can buy this disinfectant and you need to ask the, the results of the, the trio. First things, second things, uh, the most uh, efficient uh, disinfectant against ASF are formaldehyde, glutaraldehyde, uh, monopersulfate of potassium, uh, something like that, phenol works but you have to check with your supplier, okay? Because the supplier can, ask, can advise you the concentration and the, the, the type of, uh, of using 
For me, uh, I prefer to use foam because I, I am able to check if I spread the foam everywhere. And but you 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 have to to buy the good disinfectant and check with the sprayer if the disinfectant is efficient or not against ISF. It's my advice. Okay, thank you very much for that uh, practical advice and uh, your opinion on disinfectants, Philip. So. Your, your best recommendation will be glutaraldehyde and formaldehyde, and then for uh, phenolic type of disinfectants, need to check first with the suppliers uh, with regards to the trials. Being, yes. Or uh, does it, that's been done. Thank you. Okay, Jonathan, our last question to our uh, speaker. Yes. All right. Yeah. The, so the last question for today goes to uh, Mr. Laville. And it seems that, yes, your presentation raised a lot of interest. And here is the question. And could you please repeat the procedure you did using Sentinel Peaks, just briefly? During the Sentinel Peaks, of course, we have to do the cleaning and disinfections, everything in and outside the building very well first. And then you have to do the environmental lab test. It means you have to swap everywhere inside or everywhere inside the buildings or outside the building that you suspect. Example, where you uh, open the pigs to do, to do the postmortem or where the dead pigs are, you have to swap everywhere that you suspect and even the boris place. And then after you do the lab test after disinfection and they are all negative, and then you start doing the sentinel picks. When you start the sentinel pick, you have to select uh, effective or a fast pick that in a good condition as well, that they are at least 15, 20 kilos, and they can go through all the buildings or outside the buildings. The first step we do is we open one pence by one pence. For example, if I put 10 picks, at least three pigs in a pen that we have to put the feed, we make them hungry and we put the feed everywhere inside the building and let the pigs lick all the feed and the pens inside the buildings everywhere and do this day by day. One day this pen, the next day we move to another pen by putting a little feed, some feed with waters in there until we finish it. And even in outside, we have to, uh, outside the buildings, we have to go where we suspect, example, like uh, the entrance, where we bring the dead pig out or we take the pigs out. We have to cover the blocks, like five to 10 meters, or let the pig just stay in there one day or two days. We put the feed them and spray some water. They, they, they will dig the hole of the, the ground they will dig it, they will drink the water from that area, every suspect's area, and then we open, let them go everywhere. We try even in the waste pond, we raise the pig and push them inside the pond of, uh, inside the waste pond, and then let them come back. Every pig do that. And after two weeks, we select all the samples, we select we collect all the blood for the PCR test at the laboratory. It confirmed no negative, and then we do the disinfection again, and we keep it for a while. One week later, we rest the pigs again. That's our uh, protocol of checking the environment or inside the building and the sensory pig as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Labil, for this uh, precision. So, thank you. Sure. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, as much as we wanted to discuss more, unfortunately, it is now time to conclude today's webinar session. Once again, thank you to all our participants across the different parts of the Philippines and Asia for joining us today. And many thanks to our five distinguished speakers, Philip Grillo, Mr. Lila Vale, Mr. Lunan, Dr. Max Montenegro, Dr. Voltaire Basinang for your time for sharing these lessons and practical solutions in the midst of repopulation after ASF. Such a powerhouse combination covering all the important aspects of this battle against ASF. So Mr. Uh, Philip, Mr. Laville, Lunan, uh, Doc Max, and Doc Voltaire, may we request for a short message perhaps to, to our audience, the stakeholders of the Philippine swine industry. Uh, will you please go ahead first, Philip? 
Yes. Short message. Thank for all. Thank for all. And uh, if uh, some participants have some question, I ask them to send you a uh, job and you, I, I, I try to answer uh, as quickly as possible. Okay? Okay. Thank bye bye. You. And see you, see you next time. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Philip. <laughs> All right, Mr. Uh, Laville. Okay, thank you very much for uh, this opportunity for me from Cambodia to share about how we manage our people uh, during the ASF. And uh, thanks for, uh, for everyone for this uh, time. And I hope everyone safe from the COVID-19 and everyone be uh, taking more attention on uh, COVID-19 as well. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Laville. Lunan? Okay, thank you, uh, everyone. And, um, of course, I hope you are safe in, in the COVID time. And uh, yes, uh, please uh, don't hesitate to ask us if you have any questions, especially for China, because I'm working in the field in, for many years. Uh, so yes, please. And if you have any questions, please send to, to the job. And we are, I'm very willing to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lunan. Doc Max. Yes, thank you for all the participants who joined us this afternoon, uh, especially from the Philippines. I would like to enjoin them to, uh, to work together with the Department of Agriculture, especially the uh, provincial veterinarians who are uh, leading the, uh, the fight against uh, ASF by implementing yung Babay ASF. So I think that if we join hands together, we will actually uh, lick this uh, problem of ASF, but it is necessary, especially for backyard farms, to level up their... Uh, Husband, the husbandry procedures, no? so that we will conform with the GAHAP or good animal husbandry procedures for swine and therefore lower the risk of uh, getting infected. Then worry about your biosecurity classification because if you just read them, very, very, it's very easy to, uh, to, to conform. So it will be just six, uh, six plus three, the six of uh, gates to hell of Mr. Philip plus three risks that are... Uh, actually uh, inherent or uh, present in the uh, in the Philippines. Yun lang po. Thank you and magandang hapon sa inyo lahat. Okay. Thank you at magandang hapon din po, Doc Max. Lastly, Doc Walter. Yes, uh, I'd like to thank first uh, All Mix for organizing this event. Uh, and I'd also like to thank all the first, uh, participants. Uh, we in Bulacan are very much aware that we still have a long way to go to go to where, where we want to go. But uh, we believe that uh, through the help of PCSP, uh, our national government, and uh, through the eagerness and uh, willingness of our uh, hog racers to repopulate, uh, we, could, uh, we could be successful in our repopulation efforts. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much again to all our fight uh, speakers. Maraming salamat po. Jonathan? Yes, thanks, uh, thanks again to all our esteemed speakers today and also uh, in particular to our dear participants as well in front of the screen. So again, if you have any question or need further information related to the topics that our uh, speakers shared today, do not hesitate to contact us at uh, marketingasia at allmix.com and we will be uh, really pleased to answer and give you some more insights and information. All right. And uh, now to give us the synthesis of what has transpired today and to deliver the closing remarks, let us call on the chairman of the Philippine College of Swine Practitioners Specialty Board, Dr. Tomas Aborda. Okay, on behalf of uh, our very uh, dynamic president, Dr. Angel Maraba, who uh, can't make it uh, full time this afternoon to be with us, because he has to attend an equally important uh, conference. Allow me to follow his uh, overall abstraction and dissection of all the topics uh, presented by our competent speakers. Uh, first on Mr. Philip Drew, the key message here is simplification of biosecurity protocols. 
what good a biosecurity protocol is if it's not implementable at all because it's too complex. And what is striking uh, in his presentation was his observation uh, that uh, most of the smallest farms are free from ASF. And why so? Most likely because they don't have many contacts uh, for, or from, uh, coming from the outside uh, environment. Okay. On Mr. Lee's uh, presentation uh, about people management during ASF and repopulation, his testimony should instill in us uh, that only farms with biosecurity were the last men standing and are the last men standing amidst ASF. And not worthy to emphasize that customers and people account for 70% and 16% respectively among those bringing in germs or contaminating the farm. So it is just logical to regularly train and retrain people on biosecurity, including rapid response. We made emphasis on that. Huh? Rapid response if biosecurity is uh, compromised. Mr. Lovi also recommends uh, enlarging the green zone or what they call the clean zone. It makes sense to easily control entry to the farm than controlling the problem inside the farm. Okay? And again, he emphasized how important biosecurity is and a speedy reporting of breaks in ASF, if ever, uh, the, 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 uh, there are breaks in, uh, in, in uh, some areas to prevent the spread of the virus in the whole farm. And ASF could be controlled in few uh, pens only. As to uh, oh, oh, one thing noticeable also uh, with Mr. Levin's presentation is the selective depopulation, which is being implemented in Cambodia, uh, what we call tooth uh, extraction. So again, uh, uh, he also. Uh, emphasize that uh, you know uh, biosecurity is still the best option to date uh, since vaccines, effective or and safe vaccines are not yet available. Okay, on Mr. Lunan, he provided a, a wide perspective and an overall view of uh, ASF in China, uh, which really created havoc uh, that resulted to almost 40% loss uh, of live pig, uh, live pigs in uh, in the country. Uh, their approach uh, uh, first was totally ca total culling, but eventually practiced uh, accurate uh, culling, or as we call it, tooth extraction. Okay. Mr. Lunan also uh, made mention of ASF vaccines. The message uh, we are getting from his presentation is that to believe that current vaccines are uh, really work. Uh, his warning was uh, not to dare try it. Okay. His key message on uh, repopulation, uh, it's, not, it's not an impossible mission. Okay? It's not dream up, dream at all. However, Mr. Luran stressed that things have to be done right. Okay? Uh, moving to uh, Dr. Max Montenegro's uh, presentation, one, one uh, very novel uh, uh, thing that, that, that has advanced on the part of the government was the adoption of a national program at last, <laughs> coined as uh, Bob by ASF in partnership with the private sector. The local government veterinarians were empowered to ensure the program's success. But again, uh, biosecurity awareness of all stakeholders uh, nationwide was highlighted since this is the only sure thing at the moment while effective and safe vaccines have yet to be made available. Okay. And uh, uh, ironically, uh, there were more challenges posed by Dr. Montenegro. And one of them is the, that is so critical is the lack of uh, manpower for surveillance and monitoring. Perhaps uh, uh, it boils down to funding issues. 
another difficulty everyone's facing now is uh, to strike a balance between, between ASF control, support needed by swine producers, and satisfying demand for affordable pork. And over and above uh, those advances in the is the huge task uh, to protect the gains uh, in ASF control. Uh, concludingly, the road to recovery is not an easy path and we need to safeguard our gains. And finally, on Dr. Uh, Walter uh, Masinan's uh, uh, story, uh, he presented a blow-by-blow -blow account of how he was able to manage uh, and still managing uh, the uh, ASM in, in, in a province, uh, in his uh, territorial uh, uh, jurisdiction, that is a very vital producer of uh, hugs in the country. Okay. And uh, in a nutshell, uh, Bulacan is still expecting a gigantic task ahead for its uh, repopulation. Okay. Moving on to the closing remarks of uh, Dr. Angel Manabat, uh, he said, uh, and I quote, African swine fever has truly become historically the biggest and most uh, destructive disease that has come to our shores. It has left our industry truly devastated and uh, many uh, feel helpless in the face of such a fearful adversary. We can cover our fear and be defeated by this monster or we can choose as an industry to unite and work together to overcome ASF and rebuild the industry. Pork will continue to be sought after protein uh, by Filipinos and in the future. Pork importation will never be a long-term solution for preventing hunger and ensuring food security for our people. Those countries that have a strong agricultural industry have been spared off what we are experiencing, such as pork supply issues and skyrocketed uh, pork prices. And as mentioned by the great speakers this afternoon, ASF can be beaten if we are willing to do what is needed. We need to rebuild the local swine industry and through the intelligent and calculated repopulation of our swine producing areas, we hope to ensure a successful and sustainable return of pig farming in the country. Thank you for joining our webinar this afternoon. Thank you, Omex. Merci, Omex. This is Tre Associé, PSP, pour concevoir cette entreprise louable. That means thank you, Omex, for partnering with PCSP to conceive this 40 endeavor. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat and keep safe. Thank you very much, Doc Acorda, and uh, also thank you. And pleased to see your very fluent French uh, language. So uh, again, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, and also to the Philippine Swine of uh, Philippine College of Swine Practitioners to uh, to combine this event today all together. So, and as well, uh, a big thank to all the participants who joined today. Okay, so uh, dear participants, our swine industry stakeholders, I think the main message really on this webinar is clear. We are all in this together in the battle against ASF. And by learning and working together, we are certain that we will rebuild the Philippine swine industry. Yes. Indeed, but uh, hold on, uh, we are not yet finished. So will you now proceed with another exciting part of the program? So the second mm -hmm. part of the ruffle draw. Sure, so sure. Okay. Five lucky winners will be get webcam as prices. So are you ready? All right, so let's uh, get it on. <laughs> the first winner of a webcam. Okay, we have one bull. <laughs> okay, congratulations, Dr. Tuan. <laughs> okay, the next uh, winner is... Uh... We have... 
uh, Mr. Jimmy Casino. Right? Congratulations, Mr. Jimmy Casino. Our third winner. We have uh, Francis Xavier Bonto. And then, congratulations, sir. Second to the last winner. Who can it be? Now we have Eliezer Babylonia. Congratulations, Eliezer Babylonia. And last but not the least, Okay, we have MG Vieira Gaspan. So, congratulations again to our winners. Congratulations to, yeah, to all the winners. So, uh, again, our representative will uh, contact you for getting your uh, prizes that you want today. So, it was indeed a fun uh, and a full lesson uh, this afternoon for all of us. So, Maraming Salamat, Salamat Po, again, and this was uh, Jonathan from Vietnam. And uh, this is Dr. Joe Bissinar from the Philippines. And on behalf of the Philippine College of Swine Practitioners and Omics Group, thank you very much, everyone. Maraming Salamat Po, at mabuhay ang Pilipinong magbababoy. Thank you very much. See you next time. Okay, good. good. Thank you.